Okay, people, can you see us, guys? Hi. Just tell us that we are visible and audible to you quickly so that we can warmly welcome you to this amazing session of today. Hey, people. आप कुछ बोल अरे वाह ये तो कुछ अलग ही चल रहा है स्नेहा विवेक एंड क्या हो रहा है ये कायरा व्हाट इज हैपनिंग ओके गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल द ब्यूटीफुल 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 पीपल आउट देयर दिस इज भावना योर मास्टर टीचर ऑफ फिजिक्स अलोंग विद अनदर मास्टर टीचर ऑफ फिजिक्स एट ग्रेड 9 एंड 10 वेदांतो इंग्लिश चैनल दैट इज अनूप सर हेयर Please, please, please let us welcome all of you to this amazing, amazing session today that we are going to do with the most, most repeated question from past years. Right, right, Anup sir. Absolutely, absolutely. What's up, people? How are you guys doing? All good? Yeah. How is your exam? Uh, nervousness? All great? Yeah. Able to manage it? Anup sir is quiet because uh, who is speaking? Who is speaking? Huh? Who, who lets? Who lets the other person? <laughs> Who doesn't let the other person speak? Bhav na ma. You you just have to sit quietly and listen. That's all. All I'm doing is exactly what you guys are doing. Anyways, welcome guys. Welcome. A really a uh, very warm welcome to all of you guys out there. I hope all of you guys are doing good. I hope your preparations for your science is going at full fledge because it's the last uh, you know the last couple of minutes you can say in a race. So utilize it and to make it happen today we are back. with some of the most repeated questions as ma'am has rightly mentioned we'll go through some of the questions that has been repeated several times in the previous year bones so that you guys get a clear idea of what you have to prepare on and more importantly you can understand what you have to stress on as well right so people are you guys ready all good yeah are you ready ready 25% nervousness 75% excitement ja 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 wow percentage wise or not <clears throat> we are like are generation are x gen x gen z actually now <laughs> and know, actually vanup sir have learned he is being married for more than one year he knows when a lady speaks he has to be silent exactly. <laughs> otherwise he'll get beaten up so uh, yeah. i just so <laughs> all right so here is our mom ha we can please start what yeah. is so we will start with this so people first of all without even uh, like uh, looking forward because you guys are very like mix of nervous and mix of excitement is there we have planned a th- so thoroughly for your uh, for your science exam that every teacher that is physics chemistry biology every teacher is trying to put the best foot forward so that you can put the best foot forward in your exam so we have created a very uh, amazing 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 schedule for you guys which is right there on your screen abhi and you can see that from today itself all everything is started full fledged ekdam dhamakedar performance ke sath aapko ye puri videos dekhni hai because each video is going to help you very much for your science exam right so talking about today just before this class i have seen shilpi ma'am telling her secrets like hota na dadi nani ke secret she has been hiding these secrets and she just told how she can and she did score 95 plus in her science exam and how you can also do that now we are here me and anup sir to tell you with the most repeated question quoting in the terms of amrit sir pyqs kar lo baki padhne ki zarurat nahi hai <laughs> but i'll not go with that but yes it is like nas 3 days left थ्री डेज फॉर योर फाइनल एग्जाम फॉर योर टर्म टू फॉर योर होल ईयर अब आपकी मेहनत दिखेगी सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी वेरी हेल्पफुल बिकॉज येस यू विल गेट टू नो हाउ सी बी एस ई एग्जामिनर और पेपर सेटर थिंग्स अबाउट देन इट इज द मोस्ट एक्सपेक्टेड क्वेश्चन फॉर बायोलॉजी गिवेन टू यू बाय योर न्यू बायोलॉजी मास्टर टीचर दैट इज प्रितेश सर दिस इज फॉर टूडे बट दिस इज नॉट डन द अदर थिंग दैट यू मिस्ड इफ टूडे आई टेल यू गो टू एनी वीडियो ऑफ टूडे और येस्टडे सेवेंथ like let me just start writing 7th 8th and 9th all those people who want to check that how well prepared they are there is not one not two kitne kitne mock test hai anup sir kitne teen 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 oh my god anup sir ne hindi mein teen bola wah wah anup sir wah so these are three mock test of science that are going live every day at 10:30 to 12:30 exact timing matlab pura exam ka feel aa jayega for you guys you cannot and should not miss it 
सो टुडे इट सेवन इफ यू मिस डेट यू कैन स्टिल अटेम्प्ट इट बे आई गोइंग टू द लिंक बट आई प्रेफर कि अभी एथ और नाइन्थ को भी है डू गिव दूज मॉक टेस्ट लाइव एंड इट विल बी अ वेरी थ्रिलिंग एंड एक्साइटिंग एक्सपीरियंस फॉर योर सेल्फ एज वेल बिकॉज यू कैन चेक योर नॉलेज एंड योर टाइम मैनेजमेंट स्किल एज वेल so don't exactly. miss this test at all at all no, and the link will be i don't want people oh, sorry sorry bro sir sorry. link ka is ka where is the link just to, just to add all what i'm trying to say is this people that uh, it's going to be very similar to that of your board pattern so 40 mark paper exactly how much time that you get in your boards so it is going to be a very good place for you to check and to understand where you really stand at this point of time so please do take the test again it's absolutely free you don't have to pay any money and all it's absolutely free but it'll give you a good idea where you're standing at this point of time so that accordingly you can take some steps to change that in this last hour of your examination exactly right? yes please and where where are the link sir kahan milega bachcho ko link kahan milega for the mock test link to description pe aur ha description pe milega all we do is click on the drop down aur khalas description aa jayega aapke And while you are going for the description, don't forget to like this video. Okay, भूल जाते हो कंजूस हो तुम लोग बहुत. Don't do that. Okay, so the target for today I'm setting is 200 likes. Let's see while till the end we go to this video. Can we get those likes or not? Now this is for today, but tomorrow also your fully packed schedule is there. Five guaranteed question for your term two, Shilpi ma'am. That means chemistry. Five tips of Anoop sir. Anoop sir, you know Anoop sir, right? Anoop sir, he will tell you how to become a topper. Anoop sir, can I laugh? Laugh, laugh, laugh for it. No, this is what I even. This is life. People are going to pull you down like this every day. All right. People like Bob and Mama there in every, every, every gully. <laughs> no, Sorry, this huh? is not true. So, ideally, actually, I told this to the students yesterday as well. Every Don't student trust. is Don't unique. Trust. Every student is different, so maybe you get some ideas from Shilpi, ma'am. You you are more uh, relatable to her, or some people are more relatable to Anoop sir. So don't miss even one session of this because you never know which word, which line will turn out to be the life changing experience or life changing thought for you. So do not miss this at all. Pratesh sir is also going to give his top tips that how he and how you can score hundred out of hundred. Right, so this is the schedule for tomorrow and ninth ko hai mega marathon, the marathon that will make sure that you guys revise from the start till the end everything along with your doubt solving on one single day. So exam se ek din pehle, war se ek din pehle, the army should be totally ready. Even after the exam, we guys are with you with term two paper discussion, which will be taken care by Shilpi Ma'am, Anoop Sir, and Pratesh Sir together, along with the doubt solving class on ninth itself, which is again all of these teachers together. So, ah, we have completed the preparation. Are you ready? That is the question. Do not miss a single thing. I'm telling you, this is going to be an amazing experience, a very important experience rather for you guys to attend. Right, Anoop Sir? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, I think uh, everything is laid out right now. The choice is yours. All you can do is utilize all these opportunities that you're getting and make the best out of it. That's all I can say. Uh, again, we all we will give our very best. We'll be here from the morning till the evening to clear your doubts, to uh, do the marathon of every single subject, every single chapter. We all of us will be coming live and uh, helping you guys with your doubts and everything. So make sure that you utilize it and make the best. Start of it, alright. So, anyways, with that said, let's uh, start with the questions. I believe let's not waste much time. They've yes, already sir. yes. So let's, let's, let's jump. So, I say, let's divide. 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 Let me clear everything. Yeah. Now this acting is just like Bhavna Ma'am right now. Yeah, I am I'm acting correct. because that is what I am. Now nah, I cannot help that up. Okay, so students, this is one question. Read this. I don't know why this is written twice, but read this. Maybe this would be have coming from two different boards as well. 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. <laughs> this question has been repeated every year. Now I'm not saying this question will be repeated this year because I will definitely tell you the honestly what you guys already know that your paper is going to be application based, and if your paper is going to be application based, nothing is going to be directly asked, but 
your application for anything requires a strong concept building so if the question is being said what is joule's law of heating do not get confused between any of those three formula you know we have three formulas for heat when while we calculating it is h is equals to what v into i into t h is also given by v square upon r into t but when i say joule's law it is referring to the third one which is h is equal to i square rt now this is something first thing that is important because we all get confused ki bhai kaun sa formula puch rahe hain for whenever it is joule's heating law as you have to write the last one now just writing the formula will not give you marks for writing or stating joule's heating law you have to explain this formula so ideally this formula came from the point that the heat generated in a conductor is directly proportional to the square of current flowing through it it is directly proportional to the resistance of it and for how much time you are running the conductor now these all things when i put together i get it is proportional to i square rt now many of you may have this question this is proportionality this is equal how can this be where is the constant no worries at all about the constant when you write h a as proportional when you remove the sign of proportionality you put equal you put a constant and this is k and you write i square rt now you know newton baba yaad hai f is equals to ma wale newton baba even f was proportional to ma but he defined the constant in si unit such a way that it became 1 similarly joule baba is as smart as newton baba k in si unit is defined in such a way that it comes out equal to 1 hence what formula do we reach we reach the formula h is equals to i square rt and this is your joule's heating law now in your exam bachcha party if this question comes depending on the marks you will explain everything but even though it is a two marker question and state and write the formula you have to write everything like what like i am going to show right now according to joule's law of heating the amount of heat produced in a conductor is point number 1 directly proportional to square of electric current point number 2 directly proportional to resistance and point number 3 directly proportional for the time which the electric current is passing through the conductor hence this right people this is what is your answer so this is your two marker even three marker answer done right let's go with the next question what say anup sir ready ho i'm the way that you're explaining now it looks like a uh, five mark question should be awarded seven marks seven mark <laughs> sir that marks is a talent just for the sake of just for trying no is it trying <laughs> that's the talent of a student this we already talked if you are talented you can make a two mark question into three and a three mark question into five <laughs> मैगन what would be the you know what would be the thickness of the wire respectively now please remember one thing people that uh, magnum is basically an alloy it's basically an alloy of copper magnesium and nickel so it's basically an alloy with which has comparatively higher resistivity because copper has one of the least resistivity in comparison so if that is the case if they both have the same length and they have equal resistance as well which would be a little thicker is the question very simple question put down in the chat box people come on come on come on quickly quickly answer is copper now which is more which is more thicker which is more thicker which is comparatively more thicker is the question all right which of them is correct i uh, you know a little bit more thicker is the question copper pakka go man you are asking me the question magnum the like question mark and all mark hey think that think okay i'll just give you uh, can i write as it possible to write now yes sir yes One sec, let me just see if I can write people. Okay, so here is the thing, guys. Request to annotate. Request sent. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Wait. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing, guys. Very simple. First of all, we know that resistance is equal to rho into L by A. This is the formula. Now, 
they are telling the resistance of them of both wires are equal the length is also equal resistivity of copper is comparatively higher than resistivity of magnet which is a little uh, sorry the resistivity of copper is uh, lesser and magnet is higher that's what they're saying right so that is exactly what they're saying copper is less and magnet is higher so if that is the case which one would has to be thicker in order to maintain the same resistance that would be magnet if magnet is comparatively more thicker it will have the same resistance as copper for the same given length and for the same resistance value so basically what i'm trying to say is that r is inversely proportional to a so if our area that is the thickness area of cross section that is thickness is greater then resistance will be lesser that is how you can say that magnet would be much more thicker compared to copper all right i hope it makes sense people i hope it makes sense i am you know like uh, hoping that you guys can hear me clearly i'm just is all clear right all good understood so all you remember is this that if the resistance is higher then you need to understand the fact that basically the uh, you know the thickness is lesser in this case since the resistance is less they are saying that the resistance of both the wires is equal in that case magnet has to be a magnet in this case has to be a little bit more thicker so that the resistance becomes equal got it clear people done okay let's go on to the next question let's quickly go to the next question okay. i know no that's what that is a problem like ma'am is it clear my voice is clear or what <laughs> but for me it is coming time. clear let me just hear this so i am listening yeah, to yeah, the yeah, latest comment here let me just hear time. this so i am Yeah so the answer is since i and r of both the wires are same that is what is being saying the resistance is same not i so sorry l is same so as it is given a and rho these are the two quantities we are playing here so rho is already being said that kiska higher hai we know magnet has more so yes the thickness will be for what the magnet wire will be thicker as explained by anupsan and that's perfect let's just go to the next slide and let's see what's the question here so shruti there was shruti in our class na ka hai shruti dekho tumhara example aaya hi shruti come out so shruti here draws magnetic field lines close to the axis of a current carrying circular loop now everyone when we talk about a circular loop can you please tell me how are the magnetic field lines around a circular loop quickly tell me how are the uh, magnetic field lines around a circular loop now if you remember when we talk about a circular loop it also follows the right hand thumb rule only it is right hand thumb rule only but how do we follow that that is to for for straight line straight current carrying conductor so ideally you can take a circular loop as a straight wire which is being bent so for half the wire the current is going in upward direction for half the wire the current is going in downward direction and hence what do we see we see that the magnetic field lines are concentric circles around the wire with opposite direction of magnetic field as compared to each other so when the current is going up applying right hand thumb rule it is anti clockwise when the current is going down applying right hand thumb rule it is anti clockwise so talking about all these we already know this but the question is not this question is as shruti is going away from the center of the circular loop so while she is moving away these lines keeps on diverging now i guess this is not a question of circular loop this is as simple as do you understand the properties of magnetic field line now there is also a hint within the question to ye aapke liye ek tip hai bachcha party whenever you get confused do read the question at least once more because sometimes the question comes with some hint the hint is in the second part the second part ask you what are the two properties of magnetic field lines so ideally this whole question is based on magnetic field lines and what will be the answer as simply as i told you you can write it that the pattern of the magnetic field due to current carrying circular loop is concentric circle as we go from the center away what happens these field lines go bigger and bigger at the center it is a straight showing uniform magnetic field center mein kaisi hoti hai uniform magnetic field hence we have a straight line 
बट अदर देन दैट जैसे जैसे वी विल मूव अवे फ्रॉम द सेंटर द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड लाइन्स विल कीप ऑन डाइवर्जिंग बिकॉज द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड विल कीप ऑन डिक्रीजिंग द सेम थिंग comes as the properties. You can write any properties. There are five of them. जो पसंद है जो सबसे अच्छी लगती है जो सबसे अच्छे से आती है do write that. So one property is written that they seems to be originating from north and end to the south pole outside the magnet. ठीक है They are concentric complete curve. You can write that. They never intersect. You can write that. You can even write that inside the magnet, the field line goes from south to north. You can even tell that the closeness of the line tells me the strength of the magnet. Any property you like, pen it down. अगर ये टू मार्क्स का क्वेश्चन है पेन टू दे आर आस्किंग यू टू सिंपल एज दैट सो दिस इज अ थ्योरी क्वेश्चन द ओनली थिंग दैट यू नीड टू प्रैक्टिस राइट नाउ इज द आर्ट ऑफ राइटिंग आंसर डोंट मिस द की वर्ड्स एट ऑल ठीक है की वर्ड्स आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बाकी इंग्लिश आप अपने आप लिख दो सो दिस इज द आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन आई से दिस विल बी अ थ्री और अ फाइव मार्क का क्वेश्चन यू कैन डेफिनेटली आंसर दिस राइट लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंड लेट्स सी अनूप सर कैन टेक अस फर्दर फॉर द क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर ये अनूप सर All right, is the fourth question very simple? Two identical wires, one of nichrome and the other one of copper, are connected in series, and current I is passing through them. State the change observed in the temperature of the two wires. Justify your answer and state the law which explains the above observation. Okay, very simple question, very interesting one. Uh, at that, okay, there are two wires over here. Let me just draw it out for you guys. There are two wires. One is of nichrome, and the other is basically of, I believe, copper. Right. Now you're connecting both of them one after the other, basically in series. You are connecting them both uh, together. Now the question is. See, in series connection, it's very simple that the current would always remain constant, right? So, if you were to connect it to a battery, the current flowing through both the wires would be exactly the same. There'll be no change whatsoever. Now. if the current flowing through them is, is same would the temperature in both nichrome and copper be the same as well put down in the chat box so what do you guys think would the if the cur current flowing through both of them is same exactly the same nichrome also the same amount of current copper also the same amount of current but the temperature produced by nichrome and copper would that also be exactly the same is it think 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 same oh pakka pakka no wada wa wa pakka na see obviously not because if you remember nichrome is basically a wire which has much higher resistivity it is a alloy basically which has a higher resistance it has higher resistivity and if you look at joule's law of heating which basically states that h is equal to what i square rt current is same through both of them the current flowing through the time for which the current is flowing through that is also same but then the resistance in both the wires are different resistance in copper is lesser compared to resistance in nichrome 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 has higher resistivity and if you look at resistance resistance is directly proportional to resistivity so greater the resistivity greater the resistance greater the resistance greater would be the amount of heat produced as well so when you look at nichrome and copper nichrome would be much more hotter compared to copper it will have lesser temperature it will be much more cooler in comparison to nichrome because nichrome has higher resistivity now uh, another way to look at this is very simple guys nichrome is something which is used in a lot of lot of devices as heating elements like for example room heaters and all that they actually use nichrome because it act it can actually you know for the same amount of current it can produce a greater amount of heat energy why because it has much 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 greater resistivity all right so please do remember that very very important because again you need to at least remember some of the values you know few things that you need to remember about the resistivity of different material it'll get a lot more easier i'm not asking you to remember all the values uh, exactly but in the table which is given in your ncert please remember few of them at least so that you'll easily be able to place them and you don't have to think too much about all of this All right. So, anyways, uh, anything else to add, Ramnam? Please. Uh, no, put sir. It definitely, it's perfectly fine. All yeah. right. Okay. Then we'll go to the next question because you also have a session, right? Yes. Yeah. Let me just delete the annotation <laughs> you have second. done. Uh, yeah, you can erase. Yes, done. Done. Okay. Thank you very much. So, people, <laughs> as 
Anoop sir was explaining, this was exactly the same thing. The first question was Joule's heating law state, right? Now, as I told you, no, this type of question will not come this year. Why? Because no direct question you can be like expecting ki bhai wo seedha aap se statement ya definition poochhenge. No. So, these kind of question is what can come from that Joule's heating law that how you can employ that. So, this is the same thing application of Joule's heating law, the I square RT. Dependent on this, you know that it is R dependent. So, heat will be dependent on R and R is dependent on resistivity. So, hence, relate things. Backward jana seekho, aage jana seekho. Learn from a single point what all loops you can make around. Right? Let's go to the next question. understanding the concept if you ask me. If you know the concept, then it gets very easy, guys. So, please focus on the concepts and don't just buy hard stuff. Because if you do that, then that is where all the problem lies. Alright? Don't try to buy hard stuff. Anyways. Cool. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Question number 5 is in front of us. So, we are already down 4 questions and we are 6 questions in front. This is the mid question. The question here says, let's say I have a circuit which has 5 impair line. Now, sometimes we get confused. What is this thing? Do not get confused at all telling you always look for the units that give away all the information. If it is says 5 impair, I definitely know it is talking about current. Second thing it is asking, how many lamps rating 40 watt? So let's say मेरे पास एक नहीं, दो नहीं, तीन नहीं, दिवाली की light लगानी है और मुझे देखना है कि इस line पे कितने bulbs on हो जाएंगे और how many it will be able to run. So I already know, let's say the power of one lamp is given to be 40 watt. I need to tell how many such lamps. So number is not known. Can I run one, two, three, four? How many lamps can I use over this value that is current is 5 ampere and the potential is 220 volt. Now all this actually I can give from the units only. If I get confused, always go for the units. They give away all the information. This is also a very, very crucial tip. So units will kabhi, kabhi popat nahi karna. Okay. Now this is what I have to understand that how many lamps I can use. So I know one thing for power. For the power, there is a very simple formula. What does that say? Kya formula hota hai? V into, what is the formula of power? Kya formula use kar sakte hai? Yes, can be found out very easily, Vaishnavi. Super good. We know power, total power consumed is given by the potential into the current. Now here, I know the potential, I know the current. But do I know the total power? Not exactly. I know the power of one bulb. I can simply multiply it with the number n and I will get the total power. So the answer would be 40 into n on the left hand side is going to be equal to my 220 into the current value which is 5. So n comes out to be 220 into 5 upon 40. Now when you are going to solve this very simply, isko cut kar dete hai, forces ko cancel bhi kar dete hai, this is 11. So what is this? 55 upon 2. Now when I divide 55 upon 2, I am going to get 2, 7.5. अब ये 27.5 क्या होता है? एक बल्ब को आधा खाट के या आधा मतलब आधा जलाएंगे, आधा नहीं जलाएंगे? Obviously we cannot put half a bulb into the circuit. So what we will say if I want to light up some whole number of bulbs into this line, what will that number be? That number will be 27. Don't take कि भाई 0.5 का round off तो 28 होता है. That bulb will not glow because it will require extra power. And extra power kahi se nahi aayegi. You can use at, at most 27.5. Hence, the answer will be 27. So, this is a very, very nice question. But end me thoda se confuse karta hai. Don't get confused over this. I already got, Vaishnavi got the answer. Okay, 107 likes already done. Very good people. 200 by the end, session ends. We should have 200 like. Okay. Super cool. So everybody who all got 27, amazingly good. You guys are doing great. Aise hi questions hai. Do not get frightened by any numerical. You can tackle any numerical if you just follow it systematically. So all the best for such thing. Let's go to the next question. Anup sir, question number 6 on your screen all right, now. people. I hope again, uh, uh, guys, before I start, is my voice clear now? All good? Can I go back? Yes, it's clear hopefully. Yeah, let me know in the chat box now. Otherwise, all good, no? All right. All right, great, okay. Okay, sixth question, people. Six questions. Now, the sixth question for today is this. Describe an activity 
Now show with the help of a compass that magnetic field is strongest near the poles of a bar magnet. And also optional the second sub question. Mention the direction of magnetic field lines both inside the magnet, inside the bar magnet, and outside a bar magnet. I believe this is a very simple, straightforward question. Like the most bachas or bacha question. Absolutely easy questions. Okay, for the first one, describe an activity to show the with the help of a compass that magnetic field is strongest near the uh, poles using a magnet or uh, using a using a compass. Very simple. If you take a bar magnet, first of all, place a bar magnet on a table. Take a compass, a magnetic compass, the directional compass, and bring it near the poles. So when you bring the compass near the poles, you see that there will be a deflection. There will be greater deflection near both the north as well as the south pole. This is a definite proof that near the poles the magnetic field is much more stronger. So you'll be able to see greater deflection near the poles than at the middle of the magnet, which is a clear indication that it is stronger over there. Now for the second part of the question, very simple. We have done it a billion times already in the classes, like a billion times. Inside of the bar magnet, the magnetic field lines go from north to sorry to south to north. My bad. Wow. I, I myself told a billion times and I made a mistake. Huh. So anyways, just to clear it up. So uh, inside the bar magnet, the magnetic field lines are going from south to the north pole. And outside the magnet, outside the bar magnet, the magnetic field lines are going from north to south. All right. So it's the other way around. That is how it's forming a continuous, uh, you know, closed loop. Because outside is going from north to south and inside it's going from, um, sorry, south to north. All right, so that is the answer to the question, people. Super, super easy. I believe uh, this uh, you would be able to easily answer again. All, uh, as ma'am rightly mentioned, please do not forget the keywords, very, very important, and write it in a manner that you know it's not too beating around the bush, be to the point, but at the same time, do not forget to write the keywords. That's it. Moving on to the next question, yes, ma'am. Yes, so please. moving to the next question, can you just uh, erase all those? Oh, yeah, please. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so these are the answers. Ho jata hai. See, even if you know answers, na, like a noob sir, sometimes we get anxious, and that is one of the most important things that I'm while you're because answer. of my voice, <laughs> no worries. Like, I, I, I you know, that is the biggest question now. It happens, it happens. So, this is the <laughs> most important thing don't lose your calm. You guys know the answer, even if you get anxious, take a breath and then answer. So, don't lose it. It both matter. Karta hai. Those, Total two hours that you are spending there is going to decide how you reacted in those two hours, what will be your score. Okay? So don't worry, no tension. Nahi lene ka. Galtia sabse hoti hai. Koi tension nahi hai. Okay? Let's go to the third question, seventh question, which is three resistors of 5 ohm, 10 ohm, and 15 ohm are connected in a series. Okay? Very simple. And the combination is connected to a battery of 30 volt. An ammeter and a voltmeter are connected in the circuit. Draw the circuit diagram. Now, we all think that circuit diagram is a sideline topic of the chapter of electricity. Don't take it. Sometimes CBSE examiners will play smart. They will not give you a circuit, but write live, jaise ye diya hai question mein. Similarly, they will give you a question and you have to make your own circuit diagram and then answer. Now, think about the importance of circuit diagram. If you make a mistake in the making of the circuit diagram, forget about the further numerical. So, yes, circuit diagram is important. What is given? There are three resistance I have at hand, which are in series. So, this is very simple. 1, 2 and 3. So, I will put them in series. 5 ohm, 10 ohm and 15 ohm. These are connected to a single battery. So, yes, they are connected to 30 volts battery. And I will put a switch also here. This is what I'll say for my circuit, right? Now, obviously, it doesn't matter for my, what do you say? Resistor. They don't have polarity. Positive, negative, doesn't matter. But my ammeter and voltmeter has polarity. So, do remember this. There is an ammeter and voltmeter connected in the circuit. So, ammeter kahi pe bhi connected hai, usko to hum pure circuit mein ek hi connect kar sakte hai. This is a series combination. Series combination, the current value remains same. There is a voltmeter also connected. Now we will wait where to connect the voltmeter. Let's read the question further. Draw the circuit diagram to connect all the devices in proper correct order. Now ideally if I was your on your side, I will make this as well. I will examiner the impress examiner. I know everything. So what do you know? Do mention it. M meter and voltmeter comes with polarity. Always connect with positive to positive, negative to negative. The next thing is what is the current flowing? 
and the potential difference across 10 ohm resistance. Now, ideally, they have said a voltmeter and m an ammeter is connected. M meter for this whole series circuit will be one. It can work because it is series. I do not have to connect it individually. But voltmeter is connected in parallel. And for this circuit, if they are asking me a question for 10 ohm, I can do it smartly. I'll only put my voltmeter around 10 ohm with again the polarity to be positive negative. Now, this is my circuit. Now, if you make harbadi, if you first make a m meter or voltmeter, where will you put the voltmeter? There would be three different voltmeters connected. You can't connect a voltmeter in series. Don't do that mistake. So this is the very basic of circuit diagram. We take it very lightly, but it's not that, the, like, it's not a very fuddu topic. It is very important to take into consideration. Once my circuit diagram is done, the question has been asked, tell me the current and the potential difference. I definitely know current is same because it is series circuit, right? But my potential difference will be calculated according to where it is asked. So uh, across 10 ohm, I have to tell this. So how will I do this? Super easy question. Series ke liye, I'll first find my equivalent resistance, which is nothing but the sum, linear sum of all the resistances. So R1, R2, R3, 5 plus 10 plus 15 will give me 30 ohms. And that's a very good number because my total potential is 30 volts. My current comes out to be by ohm baba. So do wrench in this. Ye bhulna nahi hai, khana nahi hai. Every step you're using a formula with a given name, do write it because they have marks. Where do you are using a formula? Everything has marks. So, aadhe aadhe number karke na, examiner bahut jeb mein rakh lete hai, Don't let it happen. So, by using Ohm's law, we know V is equals to IR. So, I is V upon R. My answer will be 30 upon 30, simply 1 ampere. This is my current. Now, this current will be same in 5 ohm, 10 ohm and 15 ohm. Everybody is with me? How will I find the voltage, the potential drop across 10 ohm will be given by again using Ohm's law. Again, we will be writing using Ohm's law, but this time only for 10 ohm, I am going to use the formula V is equals to IR. I is same, but R is going to be the second one, which is R2, as I have mentioned, 10 ohms, right? So I is 1. This is 10. What is it? Super easy. 10 volts. Units are very important. Don't miss a single unit. Write your answer with units. Don't miss that. And yes, circuit diagram, as I told, don't take it very lightly. Maybe a question may come where you have to draw your own circuit diagram. So you need to know kahan si cheez kahan connect hoti hai. Right? I mean, it makes it a lot easier, guys. Even if you make a mistake, it's always easy to come back and check using a circuit diagram. So please draw it whenever you get a chance. Uh, do draw your ray diagram. No, sorry, ray diagram. Your circuit diagram, please draw it because it makes it a lot more easier. While you're, even if you make a mistake, you can always come back and check in the last minute. You know, always try to finish out the paper at least 10 minutes or 15 minutes before so that you can cross check all these answers. And while you're doing this, a circuit diagram makes your life a lot easier while you're going through it. All right. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Let's go to the next question. Okay. Yes. Eighth one. Our eighth question, people, 2012 board exam. Super important, something that has been repeated so many times. The similar type of question has been repeated so many times. The question is, an electric heater rated 800 watts operates for six hours a day. Find the cost of energy to operate it for 30 days at three rupees per unit. An amazing question, something, again, the fact is you've actually done a part of it, even your ninth standard as well. I don't know if you remember it. In work power energy also, you've done a little bit of it. So just to, uh, you know, just to remind you guys, first thing first, as ma'am rightly mentioned, write down all the given data. Steps are very, very important because even if you get the final answer wrong, you will still be getting half the marks for the steps that you write. So write on the given data first. So first thing first, they've given you the power. Power is given as 800 hundred watts they've also given you the time for which it is operating per day so per day it's, it's running for basically six hours a day uh, that's what they've given and it's run for 30 days so you need to find out what is the cost going to be in 30 days time so you can mention that also you can do it as uh, you can do it like this so six into 30 directly you can keep it like that for now so six uh 318 so 180 uh you know in total 180 hours is what it's running for for that 30 days time period now they're also giving you the cost as well the cost per unit is given as three rupees all right now remember guys one unit 
is basically equal to one kilowatt hour. So whatever you find, whatever energy you're finding, make sure you convert it to kilowatt hour. That is very, very important. So here also directly you can convert it to kilowatt hour and then multiply or leave it as it is, multiply and then finally you can convert it. So it's totally up to you guys. So if you were to divide it, you will get it as how much? You would get it as 0 0.8 kilowatt. All right, now to find out energy, Power is given, time is also given, very simple if you remember, power is equal to energy by time or work done by time, which means energy is equal to what? Power into time, EGPG. You just need to remember one formula, you don't need to remember all those formulas also. Okay, now, energy is equal to power into time, energy is given as power into time. Substitute the values over here, so it's going to be 0 0.8 into 6 hours a day for 30 days it's running for 30 days so which is basically 180 so this you would get it as something around 4 4800 or you can just scale it as 4.8 kilowatt hour if i'm not wrong 4.8 kilowatt hour is the total energy consumption all right so sorry 4.8 into 30 4.8 into 30 is the total energy consumption now that you found out the total energy consumption all you have to do is find out the cost so cost will be equal to what 4.8 into 30 into three rupees which you would get it as something around 432 rupees so this is how you calculate it now again i have uh you know it's it's too if you if it's too confusing for you guys you can remove this from here and just take uh, take it as six hours a day and then multiply it you don't have to do all of this if you are feeling like it's too confusing then don't do it do it like this then in the cost part multiply into 30 because you're finding per day this is per day energy consumption 4.8 kilowatt hour is per day energy consumption find out find that out for 30 days because per day it's 4.8 so for 30 days how much of that is going to be multiply that with the cost which is going to be 3 rupees you'll get the answer is 432 rupees got it clear super easy question i don't think this requires a lot of calculation and all it's something that you've done or practiced or you've seen it a billion times already so it's going to be super easy but then again try to avoid calculation mistakes and secondly make sure you write the steps the given data the formula all of that is important because again even if you get some sort of mistake some you know you uh, you know you go wrong in the last step i'm hoping that nobody does it but if in, even if you do go wrong in the final calculation you will still get up at least get half to you know three by fourth of the mark that was allotted to that question all right okay let's go to the next one guys let's go to the next one let's go let's go let's go come on quickly. so can you just uh, rub the annotation sorry oh yeah i keep forgetting that no oh. problem sir. <laughs> let's go let's go cool so let's go to the next question, Bacha Party. 432 rupees. Everybody have calculated. So I'm just calculating around 130 people are watching. Into 438, so we have to send this money. I'm going to send this money. Okay? Cool. So let's go to the second last question. We are doing it as a marathon. Bhaag rahe, rapid fire. Ho rahe. That's how you have to prepare now. Now your exams. And I know many students had their Sanskrit exam in between. Like that is today or yesterday. So you had less time to prepare for your science exam. But we guys are making sure that your preparation should be there. So 100 plus 200 plus 300 plus likes ho jane chahiye kanjusi nahi karna thik hai let's go with the question question number nine says explain the principle and working of an electric motor with the help of a diagram now as i said don't expect this year that they are going to give you a halwa question ki sita sita bata do how does an electric motor works they are going to make you think so if you have checked the sample paper, they have already put a two marker question from the topic of electric motor, which is so important and so integrating that if you did not understand motor, you won't be able to uh, give the answer right. So explain the principle. Who is going to tell me what is the working principle of an electric motor? Come on, people. This is like super duper easy. What is the working principle of an electric motor? Quick. Ha ha, Rosna, I know. And oops, that is best. We know that. Obviously. <laughs> okay, it facts, is Lawrence Force. Now, you will not just write Lawrence Force. When you write in your exam, you will write that a motor works on the principle of or force on a current carrying conductor in an external magnetic field. That simple it is. Then it is asking you, can you explain the working of an electric motor with the help of a diagram? Now, ideally, 
every year before this year till the time electric generator was also there in the course there was always a race between generator and motor one year motor came one year generator came one year motor came one year generator came but this year generator is not so obviously motor ko footage zyada milegi so make sure that you know that this kind of question was a five marks where you have to explain the working and the diagram what is more important for you this year you do not have to rotify the knowledge of working how does it work how many steps but you need to know actually how does it work ke ek motor ke working kaise hai don't do that uh, which movie is that did you see that movie anup sir uh, three idiots how does an induction oh, motor sick. start <laughs> <laughs> so don't do this you should know how to go about to explain it because any step of it can come as a question like in your sample paper they have just asked a very simple thing that if you have a motor coil like this a b c d so why it is that b c is not included in the turning force and the answer was as simple as that if you understand that if your field and the direction of current are parallel or the angle between them is zero the force is zero hence they do not include in the turning force so you need to know each step of it the last question can still be there what do you mean by commutator ye bahut important question ho jata hai so i would like you guys to answer me why a split ring is called a commutator what do you mean by commutator कॉम्यूटेशन नहीं बच्चे दिशा नॉट डोंट यूज दैट वर्ड कॉम्यूटेशन बिकॉज दैट विल नॉट गो कॉम्यूटेटर इज अ पर्टिकुलर डिवाइस दैट वी हैव एंड इट हैज अ पर्टिकुलर फंक्शन विच यू आर स्टेटिंग वेरी परफेक्टली स्प्लिट रिंग्स एक्ट एज अ कॉम्यूटेटर एंड कॉम्यूटेटर इज अ डिवाइस विच हैज अ फंक्शन टू रिवर्स द डायरेक्शन ऑफ करंट आफ्टर एवरी हाफ साइकिल so this is something that you guys should know because this can come definitely ye aa sakta hai ki commutator ka kaam kya hai because that is a concept you should know how does a commutator work so ideally talking here this is super easy what is an electric motor what is it working principle that is mentioned in first two lines then this is something that comes as a part of working because if you don't explain the structure how will you explain the purpose of each part so the coil permanent magnet split rings brushes what else we have talked six things we have talked yesterday an axle to transfer the rotatory motion of the circular coil outside and sixth part kya bhul rahi hu main what i am talking are the current carrying coil so we must have a circuit so ideally i always make everyone remember these six parts so when you make a diagram do label these six part at least ab ye bahut sundar diagram hai इतना सुंदर तो हम नहीं बना पाएंगे तो हम भावना मैम की थोड़ा गंदा डायग्राम से बेहतर बनाते हैं सो लेट्स टेक इट माय डायग्राम बेस्ट डायग्राम इन बिटवीन डायग्राम विल बी योर डायग्राम सो हाउ टू मेक अ मोटर सिंपली मेक टू मैग्नेट्स नाउ दीज आर शोन ओनली एज नॉर्थ एंड साउथ मेक अ कंडक्टिंग कॉयल इन बिटवीन राइट मेक श्योर यू मेक टू स्प्लिट रिंग्स लाइक दैट लाइक टू सीज फेसिंग इच अदर टू ब्रशेज एंड फाइनली अ सर्किट Now, इस डायग्राम से तो अच्छा कैसे दिन भी बना लोगे तुम लोग आई एम वेरी वेरी श्योर ठीक है वाई आई वॉज सेंग दैट ऑलवेज रिमेंबर सिक्स वैल्यूज ऑफ लेबलिंग सो दैट वेन यू मेक अ डायग्राम यू डू नॉट फो गेट ऑन मेजर पॉइंट सो दिस इज योर आर मेचर कॉयल और जस्ट कॉयल यू कैन मैंशन इट दीज टू आर योर मैग्नेट्स राइट टॉकिंग अबाउट ये जो दोनों हैं दीज टू आर योर स्प्लिट रिंग्स सो थ्री पार्ट डन थ्री मोर टू गो देन वी हैव दीज टू एज योर brushes which are carbon brushes we are which are there for circuit or connection this is my circuit so panch ho gaye which one did i forget which one did i forget people can you tell me ghumar ghumar kaun si cheez bhul rahe hain aap anup sir overthink kar rahe hain nahi nahi anup sir bilkul overthink nahi kar rahe no no i forgot the axle so agar mujhe 6 yaad hai then i will never forget anything so once i know this then the next step comes that the working should be told now this question is not going to ask in the exam directly to explain the working but they can ask for any position that if in ab the current is moving like this and the magnetic field is this how it is that the motor is going to turn so you have to apply fleming's left hand rule please be ready with application based paper that is the major point underlying point that i want to mention it. Let's go to the last question here. Anup sir overthink kar rahe hain unko overthink nahi karne denge. Nobody should overthink because usi mein sari gadbad hoti hai. Being a girl <laughs> I have that idea. When we <laughs> overthink <laughs> everything goes bad. The last question guys. I mean uh, I I this is a very common doubt that I keep getting all the time that is where in a solenoid is the magnetic field the strongest. 
right? Is it inside the solenoid or at the poles? Now, if you ask me personally, I would say it is inside the solenoid. But yeah, Bhavna, what do you think would be the answer for that? Let's get Bhavna. Same here, same here. I'll say it is inside because when we use a solenoid to make an ele- electromagnet, the field lines are strongest inside. We keep it as a exactly. core. But talking exactly. about a solenoid, now talking about a solenoid, I have seen that answer in the sample paper as well. They do mention it is at the poles. Why? Because we say solenoid is the ex- it's a replica of magnetic field for a bar magnet. Bar magnet, exactly. Now you that cannot is the confusion. exactly that is the confusion. avoid that. Yeah. All right. In a bar magnet, yes, the magnetic field is strong as near the poles because it's a solid object. You can't really see the magnetic field inside a bar you magnet. You can't right? enter but into the bar magnet, but for a ah, solenoid, know, exactly. we can. Exactly. A solenoid, on the other hand, is hollow in nature. It's a cylindrical, insulated copper wire. That's all. You can actually, you can, uh, you can put a soft iron core into it. You can put a iron nail into it. That will also get magnetized. So yes. If you talk about a solenoid, it is definitely inside the solenoid where the magnetic field is the strongest, not at the poles. I've already mentioned this before also, but yeah. Anyways, all right, people, the last question for today. For today alone, we'll be back tomorrow again. The question is, describe an activity to show how a moving magnet may be used to generate an electric current. And state the rule to find the direction of this electric current generated in a coil in this manner. <laughs> okay. Like, nee, nee, nee. Now, me, me, nee, nee, I want to show something. So, let's say what? this is my solenoid. Wow, wow, so, you okay, can wow. enter anything in the solenoid. The field lines are strong and hence, if this is a magnetic material, this will get magnetized. But if I take a magnet, you cannot enter a magnet. Hence, do take care of that. Simple. Oh, yes, sir. Is continue. That a bangle? Okay. Can, can you please bring it back? <laughs> is that a bangle? No, it's not a bangle. It, it, it is, I don't know what we call it, but this is a toy. Uh, I know. Slinky. What is that? Uh, yeah, slinky. 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 Uh, it's slinky. called a slinky. Yeah, know, <laughs> it's a toy. That was a bangle and all. Yeah, yes. Okay. So, people, to answer this question, this is the last topic that you have in your syllabus this year, at least, from magnetic effects of electric current. Clearly, they're talking about Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction here. So, if you have to show it as an activity, I would say use this one. So, what you do is basically take a solenoid, a simple solenoid, uh, um, or you can take it as an insulated, instead of a solenoid, you can mention it's an ins- you take, uh, you know, insulated copper wire, and then what you do is that you connect it to a galvanometer. You don't connect it to a battery, but rather you connect it to a galvanometer. And then what you do is you take a bar magnet and bring this bar magnet close to the solenoid and then take it away now what happens is every time you move this magnet when you bring the magnet closer to the solenoid what happens is that there is a current generated or a current is induced in the solenoid because of which there is going to be a deflection in the galvanometer which is an indication that there is current induced but again the minute you take it back again when you pull it back once again there's going to be a deflection but this time the deflection will be in the opposite direction this is what you need to mention that when you bring the magnet closer to the solenoid or uh, this uh, solenoid you see that there's a deflection in the galvanometer in a certain direction and again when you pull it back again there's going to be a current induced but this time the deflection would be in the opposite direction and once again the last scenario is this the minute you stop this bar magnet the minute you you know bring it to a stop the deflection will come back to zero. Why? Because there is no more current induced. In order for current to be induced in a circuit, there has to be a changing magnetic field. That is the key word. There has to be a changing or a moving magnetic field. And if there is no relative motion between the solenoid and the bar magnet, then there's going to be no current induced in it whatsoever. So you need to mention all these three scenarios because this is a four mark question. It will be as a four mark. When you when you see a question like this, this definitely would be asked for four marks, not for two or three. If it is like this, then you have to ma- mention all the three scenarios when you bring the magnet closer, when you take it away, and the minute you stop it as well. And now to state the rule of uh, finding out the direction, put it down in the chat box, people. Which rule would you use over here uh, to find out the direction of the induced current? Which one? Now quickly, Bhavramam's rule of uh, electromagnetic induction. <laughs> yes. Yes, no? <laughs> exactly, no? Exactly. Bhavnavam's uh, right and thumb rule. <laughs> yeah? No? Yeah, no? 
exactly the right and uh, basically if you use fleming's left or right hand rule over here so when you use fleming's right hand rule it would help you to determine the direction of the induced current so all you have to do is extend your three fingers your thumb uh, index finger and middle finger such a way that they are all perpendicular to each other 90 degrees to each other here it says that the thumb shows the direction of motion of the conductor or the force of the conductor that is the relative motion of the conductor or the magnet the index finger shows the direction of the magnetic field and the middle finger shows the direction of induced current the best way to remember father mother induced child or fbi can i remember like that fbi hands up all right well it works for you but yes this is how you remember it if you're confused about it again we have all made the whole umang series and the prodigy series on our channel is also based on this so if you have a doubt on any of these rules you can always check it out and it'll hardly take you 10 15 minutes but it'll clear all of your doubts whatever doubts you have in your mind no it'll be crystal clear apart from that then do a couple of questions that is you know do a couple of previous year question papers uh, where you'll find certain application based question like you know a proton is moving in a magnetic field what will be the direction of deflection try to solve those kind of questions it will become very very clear but please 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 stress on it because you would definitely have one question at least from any of these hand rules it could be from fleming's left hand rule right hand rule or it could be uh, maxwell's or right hand thumb rule any of these but for sure you'll have one question so make sure you stress a little bit on that because again physics uh, carries a lot of marks in your overall science paper also so make sure you stress on that a little all right so that's all that uh, pretty much covers everything now we again again we have just done again people we have done so many things before this we have done our uh, top 20 questions before this we have done our uh, previous year question papers we have done a lot of sample papers mock test papers we have done a lot of stuff before this as well and on top of this we also have the mock test series going on right now every day from morning 10 o'clock it's going to be live morning 10 to 12 o'clock is when the link is going to be live so go to the description of this video or the video before this any of the video for that matter uh, that is going to come out in the next two days you'll find out the link click on that link to take part in the quizzes and uh, in the you know you know you know the test the mock test to see where you're actually standing before your board exams all right so that's uh, that's pretty much it that is all uh, i have for you guys Uh, oh, you want me to sing for you? Why not? Absolutely. Guys, you guys score ninety percent and come back. Yeah, I promise. I swear to God. I swear to God. If you guys score ninety percent in your I science exam and come back, no, I will sing for you guys. All right, I will sing for you. I will sing for you such a way that you will never want to hear songs ever again in your life. <laughs> All right, that's how. a kadak that song is going to be all right drake i'll i'll sing drake eminem uh, justin bieber justin timberlake everyone no, don't worry it's going to be a mix of everyone no worry but you have to score righty person the ball that is the fact all right that's it promise the bro pinky promise that's all <laughs> all right so anyways guys that's uh, that's pretty much it now all i want to say is go prepare for your boards right uh more more stress on your you know uh, on your study on your self study should be given at this point of time watch videos to help you uh, you know in a couple of things but you need to spend a little bit more time on your self study also practice as many questions as possible the more you practice the more confidence you get and the more confidence you have the easier your exam becomes because at the end of the day people you've all been all been given the same amount of opportunity be it a topper or be it a person who gets 60% you've all been given the same amount of opportunity all you have to do is utilize it right now these last few days matters the most because that's what is going to decide how your next step is going to be right so good luck for that all the very best of luck and uh, make sure you give your 110% that's all just just remember that like any time you take your textbook any time you take a notebook you need to tell yourself that today i'll give my 100% now again you don't have to sit for 7 hours 8 hours a day don't do that to yourself you need to stay healthy also but at the same time make sure you're preparing giving enough time for your preparation giving enough time for your mock test papers giving enough time for your pyqs and uh, going through the whole concept that is revising every single concept that you've learned All right. Yes, Babu Nam. If you have anything to add, please. Yeah, just one thing to add. The schedule, you know, it will be there in the session. The PDF will be uploaded. Don't worry about it. I know you always worry about this. 
डू गिव द मॉक टेस्ट इट विल गिव यू अ गुड इन साइट ऑफ योर सेल्फ कि कौन कितने पानी में और पानी में नीचे ऊपर चलता रहेगा टू आवर्स यू हैव डू नॉट गेट एंशियस डू नॉट स्पॉइल दूस टू आवर्स राय था वो आई एम अ बॉलीवुड फैंस आई ऑलवेज कोट बॉलीवुड दैट चक द इंडिया सत्तर मिनट those satar minute is the what you do in those time matters the most it might be you have gone for, fallen or you have gone very great but the last time when you are actually attempting matters the most so do your best and i love you all of the students you are amazing people trust on yourself but try to put the best foot forward theek okay? hai we will be here we are always here just go wapas aao rock karke aao fod ke aao tod ke aao then anoop sir kya pure teacher gang gana gayega theek okay? hai टेक केयर हैव अ वेल डन क्लास मतलब एकदम अच्छे से पढ़कर जाना हैव अ ग्रेट टाइम ऑल द बेस्ट टू ऑल ऑफ यू टेक केयर बच ऑफ आई टी कीप स्माइलिंग एंड कीप रॉकिंग बाय बाय